and happy Palm Sunday. Hosanna, the King is here. He's here with you, whether you're able to be in a church with your church family or you're at home with your home family. Jesus is with you. He is the King. He is the victor, regardless of everything else that's going on in our world right now. And I want to celebrate that. I'm going to celebrate, especially this week, with a daily Bible journaling. I'm going to be doing the Desiring God study for Holy Week that is in a PDF from a book that they published in 2016. You can download the PDF and you can try using your booklet printer set up on your printer like I did and mine did not work so well. <laughs> so if you want to click around and find the right buttons, that might be a wise idea or else just read it online because it's quite a few pages. There's a morning and evening meditation and I invite you to read along with me and join me each day and journal whatever it is God speaks to you from one of those devotions. What he says to you is going to be different than what he says to me, but I'm going to be offering my Bible journal tutorials on whatever it is that I'm creating for that day. I've already read ahead in today's Palm Sunday devotion, but the rest of the week I'll be posting mine in the afternoon, so I have time in the morning to do the reading and the study and come up with my page for the day. I hope you'll join me. Let's get started on the Palm Sunday page. The verse that I decided to focus on that was in the meditation is from the book of Luke. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. So for my journaling, I wanted to include the rocks, and I want to be one of those rocks. The rocks don't require answers. I keep wanting answers from him, and I need to just praise him anyway. So I am taking a piece of tracing paper and just drawing rocks in there. I kind of sketched in some rough shapes and then started writing in the words that I wanted to put in my journaling. And that's going to tell me the size of my rocks, the relation of them to each other, how big they should be, how small, and which words I want to be large. And I even reserved a little spot in the last rock to have some smaller journaling to explain to my later self what I meant by this, because this one may not make a whole lot of sense to me in 10 years if I don't write down a little bit more. So I'm kind of firming up what sizes the rocks might, might be, if they were stacked on each other, what kind of angles. But I also wanted to put palm trees in there since it's Palm Sunday. And I looked up some palm trees in Israel and I just Googled for it and I found that they're just scrubby things. So I thought I can do scrubby things. <laughs> I'm going to make, I'm, I'm making mine at an angle. So they're all coming to a point at the top as if I'm at the bottom of the rock pile looking upward. I don't know if that will communicate in the long run, but that's what was in my head. So you can just make straight palm trees if you want to do something like this. But then I can use my sketch to start tracing this into my Bible. You can also just draw over this in black pen and then put the sheet of paper underneath so you can trace it. But it's a really loose idea. I just need the rocks to kind of be generally in the vicinity and have enough space to put the words in them. That's all. And I do this part in pencil at best. Sometimes I even just go in with a brush and do it and not even draw pencil lines. But for the sake of those who might be worried, then I'll be doing that part in pencil for you. So now I've got my basic sketch down and I'll get my art supplies out. I'm going to start by putting a piece of computer paper underneath my Bible page so I don't do any dripping of any color down my, the side of my Bible. And I have some water and my Daniel Smith dot card. This is one that has my favorite colors in it, at least my favorite colors for right now. That changes all the time. But this has dots of paint on it. And you can just dip the brush into the little pile of paint and use it to paint onto your picture. And I'm going to use a couple different colors around the rocks. I wanted them to feel like rocks, but also be a little bit brightly colored. 
And so I'm starting with some brown, but I'm going to add other colors to them and just let the colors merge together. It's the fun of watercolor that the colors just start doing stuff together. I had somebody recently ask me to tell them how to pick colors that they can use together. Like, how do you know which colors to get to put in a palette? And really with watercolor, you just keep putting colors down until you're satisfied with the look. If you like bright colors, buy bright colors. If you like muted colors, buy muted colors, and then just let them blend with each other. Everything with watercolor is gonna blend. It may not all go together, but you'll learn over time as you play with them and let the colors bleed together, you'll start getting an idea of what you like together. Notice that this does get wrinkly. That's just what watercolor does because paper and water are not meant to go together. But let it dry and I promise it will be okay. <laughs> For the tops of the trees, I didn't draw them in. I only had those tree trunks drawn where I wanted them and now I'm using my brush to just make some little marks for the palm tree branches. And it's really simple, just make a, a bunch of like little blobby things, <laughs> as best I can explain them. And then I'll make some palm tree trunks. And I'm gonna go right from the green, touching whatever color I wanna use for the tree trunks, right into the palm tree bottoms. Don't worry about trying to wait for it to dry and what happens if it bleeds into the green. No worries. Just let it do it. That's what watercolor does. And all of this we're also going to clean up in the next stage when we put our pen work in. So don't even stress if it just doesn't look quite right to you. Now this little part got fuzzy. My camera decided to get blurry, but I put a, after it dried, I put a piece of copier paper over the top and I'm just using a, an iron to flatten that out so that I can do the pen work without going over wrinkly paper. And this is a Micron pen. Micron pens come in all different widths, so you can get a pack with a bunch of different width, widths. You can get one just by itself. Whatever pen you use, you might wanna test it and see if drawing simple lines like this goes through. There are some pens that work really great for something like this, because it's so simple and you're not going over and over and over lines. If you're going to be doing a lot of drawing back and forth and doodling, you need to have a pen that you can actually color a mass area that won't bleed through. Even the Micron pens, if you start like scribbling and filling in a rock with black, you will get some bleed through just because you're putting a lot of ink in. But for a lot of pens that might not even be normally good pens, you could use them for some really light drawing like this but I'm going around the outside edges of each of the rocks using my drawing as a reminder of what words to put in there. I have been known to write the words incorrectly because I got busy thinking about something else while I was doing it. So I've learned to follow my sketch. And then here at the bottom, I'm adding a couple little rocks at the base and I have space to do a little bit of journaling. This is the reminder to my future self who may forget why I drew these rocks in my Bible for this particular verse, but for all the blessings I cannot yet see. May all the praise be to God alone. And that includes on a week like this, on a day like today, on a Palm Sunday when I'm not able to be with my church family. I'm at home alone with my dogs, and praising God over the internet with my church, which is great, but it's not the same. I just want something different right now, and yet that's not what God has for us. He wants us to be safe. He's doing something here that is currently hidden from us. We don't know what he's up to. We don't know how many people he is drawing to himself because of what we're going through right now that we're having a reach perhaps beyond what we think we are because we're having these online services. Maybe that's what he's doing. I don't know. And I need to learn to not need to know and to just praise him anyway. Praise him for the hidden things, the things he hasn't explained before I get the explanation. Because it's okay, because I know he knows what the answer is. He knows what he's doing. It's just not mine to know yet. So I encourage you 
on this Palm Sunday. Praise the Lord, regardless of what your church situation is. And I will see you again tomorrow. I hope you'll join me. The link to the PDF is in the description below. God bless you. Bye-bye.